everyone welcome back to my channel so today i am back with another video and this time we'll be doing a feel so the first thing that i'm doing is i'm going in with a pair of nippers to remove the bling and these nippers are actually from dollar tree so you can find them anywhere as far as your local nail supply store walmart dollar tree dollar general wherever so again we're just removing the bling and we're just using those nippers to take it off Alrighty, so after that, we're going to cut her nails down a little to her desired length. So I'm just using a tip cutter and you can find these either online. I know Walmart has some, your local nail supply store, Sally's. But again, we're just going to cut them down to her desired length. And you do want to make sure that you cut them, you know, evenly. That way you don't have one too long, another one too short. So be sure to go back and measure the nails against each other after that. So once we're done cutting the nails down, we're going to remove the gel polish or if they have regular nail polish then of course you would just remove it with cotton ball and acetone but we're gonna use a coarse drill bit which looks like this and as you can see it is a safety drill bit which means that the top is rounded and it's not gonna be uh, as easy to cut somebody especially since it is a coarse drill bit it is pretty coarse so again we're just gonna remove all of that gel polish and after that we're gonna move on to the prepping the natural nail Alrighty, so now I'm going to go in with this Tammy Taylor etcher and we're literally just pushing back those cuticles and this is what it looks like. It is a disposable edger so you can take off the little stickers at the top that you use to push back the cuticles. So again, we're just pushing back those cuticles and after that, we'll be filing the natural nail to remove the shine. And whenever we do that, we are going to be using a 180 sanding band. You don't want to use anything lower because it will be too coarse and it's going to damage the nail so those just look like this you just buy the band separately and you put it on the little drill bit and remember that whenever you're filing the natural nail we're only filing to remove the shine we're not filing to thin the nail out or anything it's literally just to remove that shine as you guys know our body produces a lot of oils and those oils are on our nails as well so if we were just to put the acrylic over our natural nail without prepping it they will lift off maybe the day or the next day or so so be sure to remove that shine as always be really gentle because we're just filing to remove that shine
Alrighty, so I dust the nails off. So now I'm going in with the primer and I'm using my OPI Bondex. As you guys know, the reason why I use this one is because I have a lot of it. But it just looks like this and you can use any primer that you have that matches your acrylic system. So I'm just applying that on the natural nail. Be sure not to get it on the skin because if they have any cuts, it will burn them. So after this, we're going to start with the acrylic. So I'm using my alpha brush in a number 10. And then I'm using the multi-balance acrylic system by Mia Secret. And I will be sure to leave all of the links down in the description. So I grab my first bead. I'm going to place it closer to the cuticle area patting it down and then we're gonna brush it down towards the tip remember that whenever you're brushing down towards the tip you want to be really really gentle because you still want most of that acrylic to stay right at the back closer to the cuticle area so you have a nice arch and as always make sure that you look at your nail from different angles because you will see me go back and add a little bit more acrylic on different spots and whenever i'm lifting the nail that's when I'm checking to see if I need to add some more. And the reasons to add more acrylic is if your, th your tip is too thin or maybe you have a little dip somewhere and you just basically go in and fill in those imperfections. But again, you have to look at your nail from different angles to check for these things. Because sometimes you could be looking at the nail from the top and it looks perfect but then as soon as you turn it over to the side there might be like a a little dip or something so again it's really really important to look at your nail from different angles and as always be sure to clean around that cuticle area really good but we're gonna go ahead and do the other fingers so we picked up a bead place it closer to the cuticle area pat it down as you can see i'm being really gentle brushing it down towards the tip to blend it in and then as always if the acrylic starts running over to the sides be sure to clean it up as soon as possible because once it get hard it's going to be nearly impossible to clean it up and you will get lifting and then another thing that i want to mention is that you want to be sure that you're using good paper towels to clean your brush off so i'm using the viva paper towels you can find these at walmart dollar general just about anywhere but they're called viva and they're really observant because just um, my last client that I did, I actually ran out of paper towels and I used just a regular cheap paper towel. And it literally like does not clean my brush up. All of the acrylic was stuck on my brush. So that has a lot to do with how your acrylic goes on the nail. Because if you have acrylic stuck on your brush, it's going to be impossible to have a flawless or even a smooth acrylic application. To be sure that you use good paper towels that are really absorbent and soft. But anyways, we're going to move over to the other fingers. So again, we just place the bead down closer to the cuticle area. Brushing it down towards the tip. And then as you can see, I'm wiping my brush off a lot as I'm going. And that's really important too because, again, that acrylic will get stuck on your brush. But we're patting it down. And then you just want to go back and keep brushing to, you know, smooth it out. And as always, clean around the cuticle area. Look at your nail from different angles. If you need to go back and add some more, that is totally fine. And then also be sure to work smarter and not harder. So whenever you go back to add a little bit more acrylic, be sure to only add a little bit. Because if you add a lot, you're going to have a really thick nail, which means you're going to have to do a lot of filing at the end. So be sure to work smarter and not harder. So last finger on this hand, again, we're going to grab a bead, placing it closer to the cuticle area. And as you can see, I, with my brush, I'm just pushing it up really close to the cuticle area to where it's like as close as I can get it, but not on the skin. So as you can see, I didn't just grab it and like put it on the cuticle. I put it like as close as I could, and then I push it up and then swipe down towards the tip.
Alrighty, so we're going to move over to the other hand and we're going to do the same thing and we'll be back. Alrighty, so once we're done, we're going to sit our brush into a little dappin' dish with brush cleaner. And we're going to go ahead and reshape all of the nails. So I'm using the same 100-100 nail file and we're just shaping them into a coffin shape, but not as narrow. So as always, we're following the sides at a 45 degree angle going from the side of their nail, which is the nail groove, towards the tip. Again, following at a 45 degree angle and then following the free edge at a 90 degree angle to make sure that your free edge is nice and straight so again 45 on the sides and 90 on the free edge and then as always just alternate from side to side make sure you don't fall too much on one side because you will have a crooked nail so we're going to go ahead and do that on all the nails Alrighty, so after we finish reshaping the nails, we're going to go in with a fine drill bit. And with this, we're going to just follow the rest of the nail. And we're also going to follow around the cuticle area. So as you guys know, I always start 
on the right side working my way over to the left side against the cuticle area getting as close as I can and I just go back and forth until I'm able to see where the cuticle is where the natural nail is and where the acrylic is that way I know that the acrylic is not on the skin and we won't have any lifting but also you have to make sure that for you to not get any lifting you also have to prep the nail correctly as well as apply your acrylic correctly if you don't do any of those it will be really hard for you to be able to seal that area um, as always you know no matter how good you think that you sealed the cuticle area if you're still getting lifting most likely you are not doing this step correctly so i would recommend you spend a little bit more time and again this is a fine drill bit and this is what you will need to use i know i've had people saying that they use a sanding band to do this and you will need a fine drill bit so i highly recommend that you get one but again we just go around the cuticle area and then we file the rest of the nail with the belly of the drill bit And as you can see, I also filed underneath the free edge just because sometimes you could get acrylic underneath the nail. So you can go back with the tip of your drill bit and just gently file right underneath the nail, not for very long at all, literally only if you need to. But again, we just file the cuticle area. Once we're able to see where the cuticle is, where the acrylic is, and where the natural nail is, then we can just file the rest of the nail to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And you also want to look at the nail from different angles. There might be a little bump that you can't see from the top. So make sure that they're all nice and smooth before you move on to the next step. Because if not, you will be able to see any little bump through your polish. So we're going to continue to do this to all of the nails and we'll be back. Alrighty, so after that I'm gonna go in with a buffer that looks like this and I'm just gonna buff all the nails as you guys know whenever we're buffing the nails that's just to get rid of any of the scratches left from our e-file so we're literally just going in and buffing each nail and as always I run my thumb over the top of the nail to make sure that it's nice and smooth and if it's not then I just come back and buff some more but as always this is a step that you do not want to skip because you will be able to see any of those scratches through your polish if you just skip it 
once we're done with buffing the nails we're going to go ahead and just dust them off and wipe them off with an alcohol wipe or you can have your client go wash their hands whatever works for you but i like to just use the regular um, alcohol pads and you can get these from walmart dollar general dollar tree walgreens any drugstore and i literally just first dust the nails off with my brush to get any of that dust off and then i go back and wipe them off with the alcohol wipe Alrighty, so after we wipe the nails off, I'm going to go ahead and apply some polish. So the first color that I'm doing is this glittery polish by DND, which is just a gold. And I'm using some loose glitter, so while the polish is still wet, I'm going to go in and just sprinkle that gold glitter over the top of the nail, making sure that I get it all over the nail. And then I'm just gently tapping it with my finger to make sure that the glitter basically kind of sinks into the polish. So again, we do a thin layer of glitter polish and then with the cuticle pusher, we just pick up the glitter and sprinkle it all over the nail. As always, make sure that you turn your client's finger to make sure that you get a full coverage over the whole nail. And you do want to make sure that you do the glitter nails first before you do any other polish because the glitter is pretty messy and it will get on the rest of your polish. So make sure that you just go ahead and do it first and get it out of the way after that we're gonna go in with this really light pink because we are gonna be doing an ombre so as always i just do like a really really light sheared pink kind of just so the polish will stick once we do the sponge method so we're gonna go ahead and apply this on the rest of the fingers and then we're gonna do the other fingers with the glitter Alrighty, so same thing. We're just going to do a thin layer of that glitter polish. While it's still wet, we're going to sprinkle the glitter over the top of the nail with the cuticle pusher. And then with our finger, we're just going to dab the glitter into the polish. And you want to do this really, really gently because that polish underneath is still wet. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other finger, which will be this thumb. And we're going to do the same process. And then we're going to come back with that same pink on the rest of the fingers. Alrighty, so once that light pink is dried, we're going to go in with French Vanilla by DND as well as Spiced Berry by DND as well. And both of these are regular polishes. And then the sponges are from Dollar General. So we're just going to dab that over the whole nail, making sure that we get a full coverage. And we're just going to do this on the rest of the fingers. And as always, we're going to go back and do a second coat. And then if you need to do some more, that's fine too. All 
Alrighty, so after that, we're just going to go in with a brush and acetone and clean around the cuticle area to remove that polish. So this is just a regular OPI gel brush, but you can use any small brush that you have. You just dip it into your acetone, wipe it off on a paper towel to while it's damp, but not soaking wet, and then just go around the cuticle area to remove the polish. Or if you have the liquid latex, you could also do that around the cuticle area and just take it off once you're done doing the ombre. Whatever works for you, but this is just what I like doing. So we're going to do the same thing on the other hand. I applied the polish on the sponge and now I'm just dabbing it on the nail. As you can see, I'm getting a little bit too much burgundy. So I'm going to go ahead and apply more polish on my brush or sorry, on my sponge. Just adding a little bit more of that French vanilla so it's not so much burgundy. And I'm just going to dab that on the nail again. And as always, just add more polish as you need it and just apply it on the sponge and just dab it on the nail. So now we're just going to go back and clean around that cuticle area again. So same thing, you just dip your brush into the acetone and just wipe around their cuticle area to get all of that polish off. You do want to make sure that you do it right after that way. It's not so hard to take it off. Alrighty, so now I'm just going to go back in and do another layer of the gold glitter on the ring finger. And after that, I'm going to be applying some bling. So I'm going to be using my SS6, my SS12, my wax pencil, and my Mia Secret gel resin. So as always, we just apply the glue wherever we want the bling. We pick up the rhinestones with the wax pencil and just place them on the nail. And then since I am using my Mia Secret Gel Resin, as always, I'm going to use my Mia Secret Gel Resin Activator, which is the spray that basically dries the glue instantly. As you guys know, with it being a resin, it is a little bit thicker than just regular glue, which means it's going to take longer to dry. But with the spray, again, it just dries the glue instantly. So I highly recommend that you buy the activator if you're using the glue. Alrighty, so I sprayed those nails with the activator. So now for the other hand on this ring finger, we're going to be doing a full nail of rhinestones. So as always, I apply the glue on the nail and I work my way around the perimeter of the nail and just fill in the middle as I go. And as always, just add more glue as you need it. And then as you can see, I'm also adding a little bit of some rose gold rhinestones as well. So I'm just mixing them up and we're just going to fill in this whole nail. Alrighty, so after that, we're going to go in with the IBD gel top coat. As you can see, I felt on the nail to make sure that it was completely dry, which it was. And then I'm just going to apply the top coat. As always, when you are doing a gel top coat on regular polish, you want to make sure that the polish is 100% dry before you apply the gel polish over it. Because if not, the polish will crack or just peel off if it's not dry. And then one thing that you want to do when you're doing glitter nails is you want to make sure that you leave those for last when it comes to doing a top coat. 
So first you do your top coat on all of the other nails and then once those are cured, come back and do the top coat on the glitter nails because that glitter will get in your brush and it will get on the rest of the nails if you don't do them last. So again, make sure you do them at the very end and be sure to wipe your brush off on a paper towel before you put the brush back in the bottle. That way the glitter does not get in your bottle. After that, we're just gonna cure both hands for 60 seconds. Alrighty y'all, so here is the final look. They turned out so pretty. Those colors just went really well together. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at GetNail32. And I'll see you guys next time.